Christine and Leah Papin, A Dark Tale of Servitude and Murder Christine Papin, March 8, 1905 to May 18, 1937, and Leah Papin, September 15, 1911 to July 24, 2001, were two French sisters whose names would become forever intertwined with a gruesome and chilling crime. As live-in maids, they were employed in the household of the Lancelin family in Le Mans, France. However, their employment would take a horrifying turn, leading to a murder that shocked the nation. On the fateful day of February 2, 1933, the Papine sisters brutally murdered their employer's wife, Madame Leonie Lancelin, and her daughter, Genevieve. The extent of violence and brutality that marked this crime was shocking, leaving the victims almost unrecognizable. The motive for such a gruesome act was unclear, but it was later suggested that it may have been fueled by long-standing resentment, mistreatment, and a sense of powerlessness. The Papine sisters' trial and subsequent conviction gripped the nation and sparked intense debate. While the French legal system had its say, the case also resonated deeply with French intellectuals, including luminaries like Jean Genet, Jean-Paul Sartre, Simone de Beauvoir, and Jacques Lacan. Their fascination with the case led to explorations of themes such as identity, repression, and the impact of class struggle on human behavior. The story of Christine and Leah Papine did not end with their trial. It became a symbol of the broader societal issues and tensions of the time. Leftist polemicists saw the case as emblematic of class struggle and exploitation, and it left an indelible mark on the cultural and intellectual landscape of France. The Papine sisters' story was not confined to the courtroom. It found its way into literature, theater, and cinema. Their tale inspired publications, plays, and films, each offering a unique perspective on the dark and enigmatic events of that February night. Beyond the written word and the stage, the story of the Papine sisters was a source of fascination for artists, with their lives and deeds serving as inspiration for songs, artwork, and spoken word performances. The case of Christine and Leah Papine continues to captivate and disturb, raising questions about the human psyche, the dynamics of power, and the enduring legacy of a horrifying crime. It serves as a stark reminder of the complex interplay of factors that can lead to such a shocking and tragic event in the annals of criminal history. Christine and Leah Papine, a family marked by turbulence. Born in Le Mans to their parents, Clemence Dare and Gustave Papine, Christine and Leah Papine's early years were already steeped in a tumultuous family history. Their parents' relationship was far from stable, marked by rumors of infidelity and a complicated history. It was speculated that Clemence, while dating Gustave, may have been involved in a romantic entanglement with her employer. However, when she became pregnant, Gustav chose to marry her in October 1901. The union was swiftly followed by the birth of their first daughter, Amelia, a mere five months later. The marriage, however, was strained by suspicion and mistrust. Gustav, still harboring doubts about Clement's fidelity, sought to distance the family from the perceived threat by finding a new job in another city, with plans to relocate. But Clemence, determined not to leave Le Mans, declared that she would rather end her own life than abandon the city she called home. This conflict over their future tore at the fabric of their marriage, causing it to deteriorate rapidly. Gustav, struggling to cope with the uncertainty and turmoil, turned to heavy drinking as an escape from the troubles that plagued their family. The turbulent history of the Papine family would cast a long shadow over the lives of Christine and Leah, setting the stage for the events that would unfold in their adult years. Christine was born on March 8, 1905. However, her mother was considered not to be nurturing and deemed unsuitable for motherhood. Christine was given to her paternal aunt and uncle soon after birth. She lived happily with them for seven years. Leah was born on September 15, 1911, and given to her maternal uncle, with whom she remained until he died. In 1912, when Amelia was nine or ten years old, it was alleged that Gustav had raped her. Clements believed that Amelia had seduced her father and sent her to the Bon Pasteur Catholic Orphanage, which was known for its discipline. Soon afterward, Amelia was joined by Christine and Leah, who Clements intended would remain at the orphanage until age 15, when they could be employed. Clements and Gustave divorced in 1913. In 1918, Amelia decided to enter a convent, effectively ending her relations with her family. As far as can be ascertained, she lived out the remainder of her life there. 
During Christine's time at the orphanage, she also received the calling to become a nun. Clements forbade this, instead placing her in employment. Christine had been trained in various household duties in the convent, easing her into becoming a live-in maid. Christine was described as a hard worker and a good cook who could be insubordinate at times. Leah was described as quiet, introverted, and obedient but was considered less intelligent than Christine. Employers were content with their work, however, Clements was not satisfied with their pay and forced them to seek better paid opportunities. The sisters worked as maids in various Le Mans homes. They preferred to work together whenever possible. On the evening of Thursday, February 2, 1933, a gruesome and shocking incident took place at Six Rue Bruyer involving the Papine sisters, Christine and Leah, and the Lancelin family. The Papine sisters had been working as live-in maids for the Lancelin family for several years. The family consisted of Monsieur René Lancelin, a retired solicitor, his wife Madame Leonie Lancelin, and their younger daughter Genevieve. The elder daughter was already married and did not reside with them. The relationship between the Papine sisters and Madame Leone had deteriorated over time, with Madame Leone's mental health deteriorating, leading to abusive behavior. She became increasingly critical of the sisters' work, and on several occasions, she physically assaulted them. On the fateful night in question, Monsieur Lancelin was supposed to meet his wife and daughter for dinner at a friend's house. When Madame Leone and Genevieve returned home after shopping, they found the house in darkness. Christine explained that a power outage had occurred due to a faulty iron she had plugged in. This explanation angered Madame Leone, and she attacked the sisters on the first floor landing. During this confrontation, Christine became violent and gouged out Genevieve's eyes. Leah also joined the struggle and followed Christine's orders to gouge out Madame Leone's eyes. Christine then went to the kitchen, where she retrieved a knife and a hammer. She returned to the first floor landing with these weapons, and the sisters continued their attack on the Lancelin women. At some point, one of the sisters used a heavy pewter pitcher to strike the heads of both victims. They also mutilated the buttocks and thighs of the Lancelin women during this horrifying assault. Meanwhile, Monsieur Lancelin, upon returning home and finding the house in darkness, assumed that his wife and daughter had left for the dinner party and went to the party himself. When he realized that his family was not at the friend's house, he returned home with his son-in-law and found the house still dark, with the front door bolted shut from the inside. This raised suspicions, leading them to seek help from the local police. A police officer accompanied Monsieur Lancelin back to the house and entered it by climbing over the garden wall. Inside, they discovered the lifeless bodies of Madame Leone and Genevieve, who had been brutally bludgeoned and stabbed to the point of being unrecognizable. Madame Leone's gouged-out eyes were found in the folds of her scarf, and one of Genevieve's eyes was discovered under her body, while the other was on the stairs. Assuming the Papine sisters had met a similar fate, the police officer proceeded to their room, which was locked. After knocking with no response, a locksmith was summoned to open the door. Inside the room, the officer found the Papine sisters lying naked in bed together. Nearby, there was a bloody hammer with hair still clinging to it. Under questioning, the Papine sisters immediately confessed to the horrific murders, providing a chilling account of the events that had transpired on that tragic night. The case of the Papine sisters and the Lancelin family became one of the most notorious and disturbing murder cases in French criminal history. Trial and Imprisonment In 1933, the Papine sisters, Christine and Leah, confessed to a gruesome double murder but claimed it was an act of self-defense. During their trial, the sisters maintained their innocence and took sole responsibility for the crimes. They were eventually incarcerated, with the authorities separating them. The separation took a severe toll on Christine, who longed to see her sister Leah. After much distress, prison officials relented and allowed them to meet briefly. This meeting was emotional, with Christine displaying deep affection for Leah, which some suggested hinted at an incestuous relationship. In July 1933, Christine experienced a disturbing episode in which she attempted to gouge her own eyes out, leading to her placement in a straitjacket. During this time, she made a statement to an investigating magistrate, revealing that a similar episode had preceded the murders. The sisters' chosen lawyer pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity on their behalf. Both Christine and Leah exhibited signs of mental illness, such as avoiding eye contact and appearing in a daze. Despite this, 
three appointed doctors concluded that they had no mental disorders and were fit to stand trial. They also dismissed claims of an incestuous relationship, attributing Christine's affection to familial bonds. However, during the September 1933 trial, medical testimony noted a history of mental illness in the family, including suicide and institutionalization. The psychological community struggled to diagnose the sisters. After much deliberation, it was determined that Christine and Leah suffered from shared paranoid disorder, a condition that arises when isolated pairs or groups of people develop paranoia, with one individual dominating the other. This was particularly true of Leah, who had a meek personality overshadowed by the dominant Christine. After a short deliberation, the jury found the Papine sisters guilty of the crime. Leah received a 10-year sentence, with her actions believed to be influenced by her older sister. Christine, initially sentenced to death by guillotine, had her sentence commuted to life imprisonment. Deaths The separation from Leah had a devastating impact on Christine. Her condition deteriorated rapidly as she wrote numerous letters pleading to be reunited with her sister, but her wish was not granted. She experienced bouts of depression and madness, and eventually stopped eating. Prison officials transferred her to a mental institution in Rennes in the hope of providing professional help. Still separated from Leah, she continued to starve herself and eventually succumbed to cachexia, wasting away, on May 18, 1937. Leah fared better than Christine, serving only eight years of her ten-year sentence due to good behavior in prison. After her release in 1941, she settled in the town of Nantes, where she reunited with her mother. She adopted a false identity and worked as a hotel maid. While some accounts suggest that Leah passed away in 1982, French film producer Claude Ventura claimed to have found her in a hospice center in 2000 while working on the documentary and Quite de Sous Papine, in search of the Papine sisters. The woman he identified as Leah had suffered a stroke that left her partially paralyzed and unable to speak. She passed away in 2001. The Papine sisters are buried together in the Cimetière Boutellerie in Nantes. Works inspired by the Papine sisters' case. The Maids, Les Bonds. A play by Jean Jennett. While Jennett claimed the play was not directly based on the Papine sisters, it deals with two French maids who share similarities with the sisters. The play explores the dissatisfaction of the maids with their lives and their intense dislike for their mistress. The Maids. A film based on Jean Jennett's play, directed by Christopher Miles. My Sister in This House. A play by Wendy Kesselman, inspired by the Papine sisters' story. Sister My Sister A 1994 film by Nancy Meckler, adapted from Wendy Kesselman's play. Les Abysses A film directed by Nikos Papatakis. La Ceremony A film directed by Claude Chabrol. Violets A 2015 short film directed by Jim Vandiola. Les Sures Papine A book by R. Lutexier. Blood Sisters a stage play and screenplay by Neil Payton. Le Fair Papine. A book by Paulette Houdier. La Solution du Passage à l'Acte. A book by Francis Dupre. The Murder in Le Mans. An essay in Paris Was Yesterday by Janet Flanner. La Ligature. A short film by Gillis Cousin. Les Murders par Procuration. A book by Jean-Claude Asfour. Lady Killers. A book by Joyce Robbins. Minot or Number 3, 1933. A magazine that may have featured the Papine sisters' case. The Maids. An opera by Peter Bengtson. Les Blessures Assassins, English, Murderous Maids. A film by Jean-Pierre Dennis. En Quite de Sous Papine, In Search of the Papine Sisters. A documentary film by Claude Ventura. Gros Procès de l'Histoire. A book by M. Mamouni. Le Fair Papine. A book by Genevieve Fortin. The Papine Sisters. A book by Rachel Edwards and Keith Reader. The Maids. Artwork by Dame Paula Rigo. Anna La Bonne. A spoken song written by Jean Cocteau and performed by Marian Oswald, inspired by Poe's Annabelle Lee, but influencing Jean Jennett's Les Bonds. Possibly, Tomorrow, 
Episode 2.7 of the television series Law and Order Criminal Intent. Deadly Women, Double Trouble. Maids. A comic by Katie Skelly. Parasite. A film by Bong Joon-ho, which might have been influenced by the Papine sisters' case. These works reflect the enduring fascination with the Papine sisters' case and its impact on art and literature. See also. Case of Amy. Popular Front, France, for more on the political climate of the times. References. Dupre, Francis, 1984. La Solution du Passage à l'Acte, The Solution of Acting Out, in French. Edwards, Rachel, Reader, Keith, 1984. The Papine Sisters. Hall, Angus, Edition, 1976. The Maids of Horror. Crimes of Horror, First Edition. Further Reading. Howdier, Paulette, 1988. Le Fair Papine, The Papine Case, in French. External Links. Media related to Christine and Leah Papine at Wikimedia Commons. En Quite de Sours Papine, In Search of the Papine Sisters, 2015, FR4, on YouTube, in French. Papine Sisters and Other Studies in Crime. Categories. 1933 Murders in Europe. Criminal Duos. French Murderers. Sibling Duos.